So, you know, the most important thing, I'll tell you, when people go out and grab paint on the weekend to do a quick project, nobody really ever addresses this whole idea of prep. Preparation Mm -hmm. is literally like 80% of the entire painting experience. If you do that right... First and foremost, your job is going to be almost effortless. That's Eric Stromer. I'm Cindy Dole. You're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to, uh, well, put a smile on your face and make your spaces better and improve how you're living at home. And, you know, when I think of preparation for painting, it reminds me almost like... um, the tradition of getting ready for tea. Have right. you ever seen how the Japanese the tea service, the, how the Japanese yes. set up for the tea? It's like this very methodical, artistic thing that's exactly that right. happens before the celebration of the tea. And so, really, that's almost like a good comparison to get your painting ready. Yeah, exactly. And so, so let me just take it quickly through. I mean, if have I you can. had some mistakes when you don't prep? Well, yeah. And what happens is that I think there a couple of things happen. Number one, people will make mistakes and then they will try and immediately wipe paint off, and mm-hmm. then that ends up becoming more of a mess than if you let it set up a little bit. So there are some real specific tricks to the trade that can really help you in this kind of a situation. So let me just take you quickly through how we should do this when we're going to do a paint job. Okay. Number one, you're going to select where you want to paint this weekend. For example, start off maybe with just an accent wall. This will give you a pop of color. It'll literally take you two and a half hours. It'll cost you about $30 total, and you're done. And then you can decide from that point if you want to proceed next weekend and finish the room or just leave it as a prep wall, right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you, you find the color that you want. Maybe find some something in from the design standpoint. Pick a pillow that you love, pull some element from that, and use that as your primary color. So then you take all of the stuff on that wall and you slide it to the center of the room. This is what people always do. They they, they don't take the materials that are around the, the perimeter of the room and put them in the right place. They either move them to different rooms or they you know, try and just slightly move them and paint behind them. If you just take everything off the wall and slide it into the center like of the room. Like all the furniture. All the furniture, all uh-huh. the pictures, just put it right in the center of the room. You can then tarp the entire wall in one piece of uh, plastic that you'll get at the home improvement store. That's Done, covered, protected. Then vacuum. That's the next step. Vacuum the little the dust, dust bunnies. Get uh-huh. every all the dust away and eradicate it. Use a vacuum cleaner or a wet mop. Get all that stuff off. Get a sponge. Wipe down the baseboard. If you've got dust on the wall, just quickly wipe down the well, wall. Who doesn't? I mean, yep. you, but don't you think there's going to be grease on the walls? All you have the time. To wash it yes, off. Yeah. yes. And if it's grimy and there's, it's a kitchen situation. There's old mm-hmm. bacon grease or something. Get something called TSP, which is trisodium phosphate, and you mix that three to one in water, and 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 it basically will kind of take all the gloss and the shine off the wall and get all the grime away. So that's done. First of all, that's the first thing. Basically, think of vacuuming and washing or sweeping and, and cleaning. That's and all the stuff that was against the walls is now in the center of the, the room, center of the room, with some kind of a plastic tarp. Yeah. So over if you're do, if you're doing a whole room, then you're just going to pull everything into, into the, the center, center of the room mm-hmm. and then tarp it all off, so that when you're going to paint the ceiling, you can go ahead and reach over what you've made the pile of the center of the furnishings with your painter pole doing the ceiling first with a roller work, yeah. with a roller and then leave the cutting on that ceiling until the very end and when it's all back against the wall put a tarp underneath and go up there on a ladder and just paint around your light fixture mm-hmm. and then you're not spending a ton of time moving stuff back and forth in different parts of the house right okay so you got it all washed down ready to go so then you have your paint if you if you don't feel like you have a steady hand then you're going to want to do some masking but wait okay? a minute aren't we supposed to tape things off should we take a light switches off? Well, now, that this is what my or point. Does, does it matter? So, so it kind of depends on on your skill level. If you're someone who's who's painted before, and the way I can tell a rookie painter is if you're holding the paintbrush at the end like a lollipop. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, that's not no. the way to hold a paintbrush. You no. hold a paintbrush like it's a pencil. Mm-hmm. Think about, about grasping the metal part that holds the bristles. Sure. Your, your index finger should be on that metal thing, and it should fit in your hand like you're writing See, with that a pencil. Look, that look with your index finger out like you're holding a pencil, almost feels more artistic than that's that clunkiness right. of holding it like you're, you know, like you say, holding a flashlight that's or exactly a microphone, right. Right, you know, right. doing karaoke. That's it. And, the, <laughs> and you will do karaoke when you're painting because the best thing to do is have music, but just don't keep the br- the brushes too close to the mouth. Well, unless you're listening to Home Wizards, which is also well, then, very yeah, fun. Then you want to just sit there and stare <laughs> right at the radio and concentrate very, very hard. So anyway, you're holding the paintbrush like like an artist does, uh-huh, to your yeah. point, right? Like a pencil. And, yeah. if you, and if you're not steady and you haven't cut lines and paint before, then you can get into taping off with blue masking tape. Blue masking tape comes off the walls easy. That's why they use blue masking tape. There's also green, which comes off even easier. Oh, really? So if you're doing wallpaper... 
and masking that off. Well, why does green come off easier than blue? Because there's two grades of, oh. of stickiness. I just thought it was different colors. No, no, one's very easy. Do they to have pull a pink off. one? Because I uh, no they, pink. They no don't pink. think they do. <laughs> no, they don't. No. All right. So just okay. So green. so if you're gonna do. Uh, Taping off fixtures or you know a corner handles, the door or handles anything yeah. like that, you can use the blue and, and masking tape becomes your friend. So you're you're tearing it into little pieces. If you're stewing around a circle, you're doing like one or two inch strips and then kind of creating a circle by using little short pieces of tape instead of trying to go all the way oh, around. Yeah. Right, it yeah, doesn't work yeah, that yeah. way. If you if you feel steady and you can cut lines, most pro painters and myself included, I I I don't have to tape off anything. I don't have to even use tarps except if I'm rolling. A but wait ceiling. a minute, explain what cutting a line is. Cutting a line is that you're you're uh, using the paint. You dip your brush in the bucket. You you give it one quick like that. Just you dip it in up to about kind of three whip. quarters into the bristles, and then you just slip your slack your slap your wrist, your wrist down, uh-huh. get the excess off, uh-huh. and that's the amount of paint you should always use. A lot of people take the paint, dip it in, and then they go on the like edge of the can like back frosting. and forth and yeah, try. No. And, that's not it. You okay. want enough paint on there so you can. Uh, paint a line easily and uh, and with with no effort. So the uh-huh. paint is rolling slow, slowly down that brush and on the wall at the same time. And this is for it, the it corners? It should feel lubricated like you're not going into dry paint. It should just feel... And w- as soon as that feeling goes away, then you go back to the paint. And, but we're doing the cutting. Cutting means that you're going to go around the room and cut All the where edges. the wall meets the ceiling or the wall meets the floor or the wall meets the t- fixtures or the trim or the doorknob or whatever you have uh-huh. where you have to paint around things. That's it's called cutting. And we do that first? I do that first. Okay. I think it's a lot easier. So you spend your time in that. So you've pulled the furniture away from that one wall. Mm-hmm. You're going to just concentrate on painting and cutting that baseboard out from the floor. So if you don't feel steady, you can put blue masking tape on the hardwood floor, even on carpeting. When you're going to paint uh, with carpeting underneath, what you want to do is you want to tuck the blue tape into the carpeting right at the baseboard and pull it away with your fingers so that you're really shoving that tape down below the carpet height and getting behind the... So there's the, an extra lip, if you will. Exactly. You know? uh-huh. and, and so that's really kind of wrapping the carpet mm-hmm. and going all the way down to the floor below the carpeting, essentially. And that's gotcha. how you're taping off the carpet. So it's really embedded into the carpet, right? And then so, are we putting some kind of a mat on the on top of the yes, carpet? Like and the sheets? I, or? I, I like... I like canvas tarps. I don't like plastic tarps on the floor because they're slippery if it's on carpet or hardwood. But if you use canvas tarps, they're really easy to maneuver. You can fold them easily like a a flag. You know, you fold them in long ways and Mm -hmm. then you can run that. They're called runners, basically. And you can lay those down when you're painting a wall just against the wall enough enough so that you're out three feet and they come in 12-foot lengths, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to cut your area around the ceiling and the other wall and the baseboard. And if you feel uncomfortable with the baseboard that you might get paint on it, go ahead and put blue tape on top of the baseboard where it meets the wall and on the carpet below. And you don't have to press the tape down on top of the baseboard. Let it stick out like it's a little, Mm -hmm. like a roof almost, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you're rolling your paint, it's going to splatter onto the the paint and Uh catch it, Uh right? Uh So you've got the tarp down, the tape down, you're rolling, and and the the W technique is used a lot in rolling, right? So you'll make the letter W in in like a five-foot square area and then fill in. So hang on. So now that you, after you've done the cutting, are you putting the brush down and switching to a roller for the Yes, and when you put the brush down, you can... Wrap it in foil if you want, if you're not going to get to it for a while. because so foil, yeah, foil will keep it moist, right? Got put it, it back in the paint, do the slap technique I was telling you about, and then put foil around it or saran wrap, something okay. like that. Put that off to the side. Then you roll your wall out. You do your one coat. You let it dry. By the time you go from one side to the other, it'll probably be ready for a second coat. And the reason for the W, right, is just to kind of get a bunch of paint on the wall. Yep, and get your roller clear of dripping, right? right? And right. then you can go back over it. Because if you go up and down, then it kind of drips and makes exact, marks. Exactly. But this way, that angle prevents it from globbing, right? Right, okay. right. And, then, and you want to kind of be very considerate of the little lines that are created by the roller on either end of it. Yes. So that's why the W works good because it eradicates those lines. Right? Got it, got it. So once you go over your five-foot square area with the paint and you've got it applied, then go back over it very, very lightly and just gently touch it so the roller's barely touching the wall and just go one direction from the top down, right, and then go to the next one and overlap that line and go and just keep overlapping those lines very softly. That takes all the 
little lines that we were talking sure. about away. And More of an that. even approach, exactly, right? Exactly, right. And then are you doing that one one time all the way across? We're doing five-foot square areas and then moving to the next one, like checkerboard. Just keep going, you know, one on the top, the one on the bottom, one on the top, one on the bottom, all the way left to right, right to left, whatever you want to do. And the, let the first coat dry for let a little bit? Let the first coat dry. Go ahead and have your glass of wine in between or whatever you're going to do. Now, we didn't talk about primer, but many of the primer paints have... All, yeah, primer we're only going to use if we've got gloss and we're trying to cover old gloss or if it's brand new construction mm-hmm. or if it's a very difficult color to cover, like red, then you're going to want to get into primer. And this way, paint will stick better to Absolutely, those. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Easter's coming and uh, there's a lot of ways to decorate your place. I know, season. boy, I'm going to get into this world. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You don't have to buy a lot of stuff. I got some I'll ideas. I'll be up real early in the morning hiding eggs <laughs> in the backyard. That's what I do. Well, before you even do the eggs, we have like fun things you can do just to kind of get into the mood, right? Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, we love to help improve your home and improve your life. You're listening to Home Wizards. With all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest fellow.